Hey guys, welcome to another video on this channel. After years of development, one of Minecraft's most well-known mods, the Ada, has returned to the newer Minecraft versions with its update to 1.19.4. This mod adds a new and unique dimension called the Ada to Minecraft. This dimension high in the sky is composed of floating islands and there you can find mythical creatures, new ores and dangerous dungeons. So let's dive in. How can you enter this dimension? Simply farm some glowstone, place it as a portal frame in the size of your choice as you would do with the nether portal and then right click it with a water bucket in order to activate it. Simply step in and you'll enter the new dimension. After you enter this new dimension, in which it is always daytime, you will quickly find new blocks, trees, ores and more. This dimension consists of islands and if you fall from one of them, you will eventually reach the overworld and fall from the sky there. There are new dirt and grass blocks, quicksoil which is extremely slippery and trees like the skyroot tree, golden oak tree or crystal tree. The crystal tree leaves can drop white apples. These apples can be eaten but won't fill up your hunger bar. However, they cure the inebriation effect, which I will explain later. Below the dirt blocks you can find new blocks like holy stone, ice stone or mossy holy stone. The mod also includes new ores underground, which you will find pretty quickly, ambrosium and xanite. Another ore, which is much more rare, is gravitite. This ore can be found mostly at the bottom of islands and you might need to mine some time to find it, as it is rarely exposed from the outside. Note that this ore will always fly upwards, so you should always keep a block above it in order to prevent it from flying away. Furthermore, there are some new smaller plants like berry bushes that can be farmed to obtain blueberries which can be eaten, and white flowers as well as purple flowers. As you look around in the sky, you will also see clouds. As you step on these cold or golden air clouds, you will sink in at first like you sink in powdered snow. However, you can stand on them without being afraid of falling. Still, you should watch out for the blue air clouds, which look similar to the cold ones, because they will launch you up in the air, which can be dangerous for you without the right equipment. As you enter the dimension, you will receive a golden parachute. This parachute can also be crafted using four golden air clouds. If you find yourself falling down an island, you can open this parachute by right-clicking and glide to safety. The cold parachute, which can be crafted using cold air clouds, does the same. But the cold one can only be used once, while the golden one can be used multiple times before breaking. Of course, there is not only a new terrain, but there are also new mobs you will encounter. There are new whirlwinds, which will occasionally appear, and you should watch out for them, because if you get too close, they will launch you in the air, so you can fall off an island if you're unlucky. They can also spawn items when they disappear. Evil whirlwinds are whirlwinds which appear more rarely. They will do the same as the normal versions, but also have a low chance of spawning a creeper. Additionally, there are many blue and golden sweats, which look like slimes. These hostile mobs will grab you and jump into the air. Upon landing back on the ground, you will get some fall damage and the mob which grabbed you will disappear. The blue ones drop sweat balls which are basically slime balls but can also be used to turn any dirt block into a grass block and they drop blue air clouds. The golden sweats drop glowstone upon dying which can be useful if you need to build a new portal. Sheep puffs will also be walking around and they are just the adder's sheep versions. Figs and flying cows are just the adder's versions of pigs and cows but they are able to glide in the air. Both can be settled up to have an early game mount in this dimension. A saddle can actually be crafted if you install this mod. When riding them, they can jump pretty high and then glide to your destination. Air bunnies can also be occasionally found in this dimension. You can right click them to put them on top of your head, which will give you a higher jump and gliding abilities. To remove the air bunny, look at it and right click it again. Most likely you will encounter cockatrices as well, especially in dark places below an island for example. These hostile mobs will shoot darts at you that will inflict an effect called inebriation. This effect will damage you over time like poison, but it will also cause you to move randomly, which can be quite dangerous while standing on a small island in the sky. Acor plants are doing pretty much the same, only that they don't move and might be more difficult to spot. They drop acor petals upon dying. Zephyrs can often be spotted flying in the air in the other dimension. These mobs are not a huge threat, however, they can shoot large snowballs at you, like ghasts do with fireballs. These snowballs won't damage you, but they can push you a few blocks away. Still, they mostly shoot only when they are pretty close, so they are not a big threat. Air whales are also occasionally flying around, but these mobs are not really doing anything special. There are also three different types of mowers, blue, white and black ones. These mobs are friendly, and they can lay eggs. 
You can hatch these eggs in order to raise your own friendly moa that you can ride. To do that you need an incubator. This block is fueled with ambrosium torches. Simply put in a moa egg in the input slot, fuel the machine with ambrosium torches and wait until the process has finished and a newly hatched moa will appear above the machine. This small moa needs to be raised. It will occasionally start complaining and display thunderstorm particles if it is hungry. Simply feed it acor petals three times and then the mob grows up and can be settled and ridden. Moas are the perfect mount in this dimension because they can do mid-air jumps. The most common type, the blue ones, can do three mid-air jumps. The white ones, four mid-air jumps. And the really rare black ones can do even eight mid-air jumps. So you can navigate easily around with them in this dimension. Simply ride on them, press space while in the air and they will do a mid-air jump. You will descend slowly automatically, but you can accelerate the descent by holding shift while in the air. You can tell tamed mowers to sit down using a nature staff. Let's move on to the dungeons. There are multiple types of dungeons, let's start with the smallest one, the bronze dungeon. This underground dungeon consists of multiple rooms with sentry blocks, which can activate traps that will spawn sentry mobs in front of you that will explode next to you. You can't distinguish the trap blocks from the normal ones, so always be prepared for a trap to activate. There are also chests with loot. However, these chests can be mimic chests, which will turn into hostile mobs as you try to open them. This dungeon also has a boss room. This boss can be activated if you hit a large boss block in the boss room with a pickaxe. After that, the room will be sealed and you have to fight to the death. The slider boss looks like a giant block and will only move like a block pushed by pistons, so you can dodge it pretty easily. However, you can't damage this mob with a sword, but only with a pickaxe. As you damage it, the mob will increase its moving speed, and upon death, the boss will drop a bronze key. This key can unlock a treasure chest, which will appear directly underneath the boss room, and this chest contains loot like weapons, tools, blocks and items. In the dungeon, you can find special items you can't craft, like a Valkyrie lens, which has a really high reach, so you can hit mobs from further away, a lightning knife, which can be thrown in order to summon a lightning at a spot where it lands, a flaming sword, which sets mobs on fire, a phoenix bow, which also sets mobs on fire, the hammer of King Bedox, which can be used for melee combat, but can also shoot projectiles at opponents, a cloud staff, which can summon two clouds that will fly next to you and shoot large ice balls at mobs you are fighting, sentry boots, which will protect you from fall damage, a sweat cape that allows you to ride sweats as they become friendly, this cape and many other items can be won by going into the inventory and clicking on the small cloud below the player. Another menu will open where you can add capes, rings, pendants, gloves and more. Moreover, you can find an agility cape which lets you ascend a block without jumping. A shield of repulsion which reflects most projectiles back at the thrower as long as you are standing still which will cause damage to the thrower. And a new music disc. The silver dungeon which is floating on clouds up in the sky looks like an ancient Greek building. It has many different rooms with chests, which again can be mimic chests that attack you. Furthermore, you will encounter Valkyries. These mobs won't attack you, but they will defend themselves if you attack them. And they deal a lot of damage if you are not wearing strong armor, so I wouldn't recommend attacking them without a reason. As you explore this dungeon, you will eventually find a boss room. In this room, the Valkyrie Queen will await you. You can actually talk to her and challenge her to a fight. In order to fight her, you need to collect 10 victory medals by killing normal Valkyries and give these medals to the boss. This boss is really strong, so you should definitely take enchanted netherite gear or a few enchanted golden apples with you, just to be sure, in case you are entering this boss fight with vanilla equipment. However, it might be smart to complete the bronze dungeon first and to get the loot there before entering this dungeon. Because, for example, the Valkyrie Lance's long reach makes this boss much easier, so it will give you a big advantage compared to your vanilla equipment. Upon death, the queen will drop a silver key, which can open another treasure chest, with even stronger loot than before. In this dungeon, you can find more special items like Valkyrie tools, which have a higher reach, a holy sword that deals 15 extra damage to undead mobs, or mobs that treat healing and harming effects as inverted, the sword can even be enhanced with the smite enchantment, a lightning sword which summons lightnings to mobs you hit, a Valkyrie armor set which grants you temporary flight when fully worn, including the gloves, a Neptune armor set which allows you to swim faster when fully worn, a golden feather charm which lets you fall more slowly, a regeneration stone charm which will give you regeneration, an invisibility cloak which will make you invisible, a Valkyrie cape that lets the wearer fall more slowly, and two music discs. It is also worth mentioning that some effects can be stacked, like the Valkyrie cape and golden feather. 
Also note that in order to activate the effect of an armor, you need to wear the full set, including the gloves. The last dungeon, the Gold Dungeon, is located inside an island with many golden oak trees on top of it. The dungeon consists of only one room, the boss room. Here you can find the Sun Spirit, which is the mob that is the cause for the Edda's eternal daylight. So if you defeat this boss, there will also be night in this dimension. Enter the room, right click on the mob to speak to the boss, and while speaking to him, you will eventually challenge him to a fight. The room will be sealed, and the mob will set you on fire, so fire resistance is definitely recommended. And you can't damage him with a sword. At some point, round flying ice crystals will appear in the room, which you need to shoot at the boss by left clicking at them in the right angle. This will damage the boss, and it will spawn a fire minion, which looks like a small clone of itself, and which will attack you as well. And don't underestimate the damage of this clone, because even with netherite armor, it will take a few hearts with every hit. Upon death, he will drop a golden key, which can open another treasure chest with great loot. Furthermore, he will drop a sun altar. With this powerful block, you can control the time in the other dimension, by simply right-clicking the block and setting a time. In this dungeon, you can find a vampire blade, which has life-stealing abilities and a pig slayer which kills any pig type with a single blow, or stronger ones in a couple blows, quite useful for exploring the nether. Moreover, you can find a phoenix armor that when fully worn will give you fire resistance and let you swim in lava, but watch out because this armor will turn into obsidian armor if you are standing in water. You can find an iron bubble which allows you to breathe underwater, and a life shard which will give you a permanent extra heart. The mod also adds a few functional blocks. The freezer can freeze blocks and items or turn them into special ice variants. It can be fueled using ice stone. You can use it to turn water buckets into ice blocks, cold air clouds into blue ones, lava into obsidian, iron or golden rings into ice rings, skyroot leaves into crystal leaves, or the sepia music disc into the super music disc. The altar is fueled by ambrosium shards and blocks, and this block can repair the craftable tools and armor of this mod, as well as vanilla tools and armor. Moreover, it can be used to obtain certain items like quicksoil glass. Finally, let's take a quick look at the remaining blocks and items of the mod. Blue and golden gummy sweats can be found in bronze and silver dungeons. They can be eaten quickly and will fill up your whole hunger bar. Healing stones can be obtained by enchanting holy stone in an altar. They can be eaten and will give you regeneration. An enchanted berry can also be obtained using an altar and will restore more hunger than a normal berry. Quicksoil glass is a glass block that is glowing in the dark, which can also be obtained using an altar. Gravitite ore can be burned in an altar to receive enchanted gravitite, which is required for gravitite tools and armor. Ambrosium torches are simply the Edda's version of torches. You can right click on Edda grass with an ambrosium shard to turn it into enchanted Edda grass, which will increase the harvest rate of blueberries. Skyroot, holy stone, zenite and gravitite can be crafted into the common Minecraft tools. Skyroot tools will double mob drops and some block drops. Holy stone tools will sometimes drop ambrosium shards. Zenite tools will deal more attack damage or get faster as their durability dwindles. Gravitite is the best tool tier. When hitting mobs with the gravitite sword, the mobs will be flung into the air. The other gravitite tools can make certain blocks levitate by right clicking. The zenite armor gives you the same protection as iron armor. The full gravitite armor set will give you an extra high jump when sneaking while jumping. And the obsidian armor, which can be obtained by standing in water with a phoenix armor, gives you the same protection as netherite armor, but without a knockback resistance. The mod includes three different dart shooters. The basic golden ones can be crafted using golden embers, which can be obtained by mining golden oak logs with a zenite or gravitite axe. The golden dart shooter doesn't have any special effects. However, it can be enchanted in an altar to turn it into an enchanted dart shooter, which deals more damage. You can also use the acorn petal, which can be obtained by killing an acorn plant, to craft a poison dart shooter, which poisons the target. A skyroot poison bucket will poison you if you drink it, and it can be used to craft poison darts. The item can be obtained by right-clicking an acorn plant with a skyroot bucket. A skyroot remedy bucket, which can be obtained by enchanting a skyroot poison bucket in the altar, can be consumed to negate the inebriation effect. There are multiple rings and pendants included in the mod. The iron and golden ring and pendant are simply cosmetics. The zenite ring and pendant will allow you to mine faster, however they don't last for long. The ice ring and pendant will freeze water and lava when walked on, like with the frostwalker enchantment. The ice ring and pendant can be obtained by freezing a golden or iron ring or pendant in the freezer. The white, red, yellow and blue cape can be crafted using wool and are just cosmetics. A rogel is a semi-transparent building block that can be obtained by placing lava in the ada. It also has a really high explosion resistance. 
There's also some Christmas content included, like a Christmas themed tree with holiday leaves, presents, candy canes, gingerbread and a candy cane sword that will only spawn around Christmas, but you can also permanently activate them in the mod's configs. Finally, the mod also introduces a bunch of advancements, which start with entering a new dimension and cover the completion of dungeons, crafting new machines, riding new mounts, obtaining new weapons, defeating the final boss and so on. This covers all the information about the mod. The mod is currently only available for version 1.19.4, but the developers plan to backport it to version 1.19.2 in the future. The textures of the old Adam mod have been overhauled for this new release, and you can download the mod on the main platform ModRenv, but on CurseForge as well of course. You can find both links in the description below. Overall, I am really happy that this mod has returned to the newer Minecraft versions. Not only for nostalgia, as it is one of the first large Minecraft mods ever made, but also because it is simply a good mod. The mod is well thought out, has great models, mechanics, and definitely adds some great content to Minecraft. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss any further reviews, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.